Okay, so it's time for a bit of a different video. In fact, it's actually something that we've been wanting to look into for a while now. You see, the whole team has been getting deeper and deeper into notebook content lately, and as we're testing them, one question keeps coming up in the comments. Exactly how much of an effect do built-in performance plans have on the overall effect of a gaming laptop? What's the best built-in option for elements like battery life, gaming performance, noise, or simply a balance of all of those factors. I personally think that it's a very important topic and it might change the way how we look at gaming laptops in the future. So let's get into it with a quick backgrounder first. I've also added timestamps down below so you can quickly navigate through certain sections. Nearly every one of today's gaming laptops has built-in controls that go above and beyond what Windows offers. It's actually pretty rare to see one using only the Windows power plants these days and in many cases, they straight up replace the standard options. The reason for this is pretty simple. People who spend big bucks on these notebooks want them to be a jack of all trades that can be used for hours on battery for work or homework, but at the same time also offer the highest performance when it's time to game. So the intent for this video is to offer you a snapshot of what these different power plants can achieve. So for that, I have to thank Lenovo Legion for partnering with us and sending what's literally their most powerful gaming laptop. This is the Legion 7i and it's a beast guys. It's fully kitted out with everything including the kitchen sink. There's an Intel Comet Lake Core i9-10980HK CPU, an RTX 2080 Super Max Q graphics card, 32 gigabytes of RAM, a couple of terabyte NVMe SSDs in RAID, and the option to configure the operating system with either Windows 10 Home or Windows 10 Pro. All of this fits inside a pretty slim 15 inch chassis. And if you wanted to check out a review of the 7i, you can do that right over here. But spoiler alert guys, this actually is the fastest gaming notebook that we've ever tested. Right now, the 7i can be configured in a ton of ways, starting at $1,400 all the way up to this $3,000 monster. There's also the 5i series that offers a bit more affordable 15 inch and 17 inch options with Intel CPUs. And I also need to give some credit to Legion for launching the new 5 series that's a whole range of gaming notebooks with AMD's awesome new Ryzen mobile processors. Expect a review on one of those very soon. But anyways, just like the competition, Legion offers three distinct and very straightforward power plants that override the Windows presets. So the first one being silent mode, which limits fan speeds and performance, but at the same time, it's supposed to extend battery life, uh, which will be much easier to live with. And then there is auto mode, which is the default power setting, and it's supposed to balance out performance, heat, noise levels, and battery life. And then finally, there is the performance preset, which just cranks everything up uh, to get the best possible performance out of this machine. Switching between these can be done in one of two ways. Pressing the function and Q button on the keyboard will give you the option to quickly cycle through the modes with a quick indicator graphic on the screen. The benefit of this is that it can be done without all tabbing out of an app. You can also go into Legion Vantage software and change things up there as well. As a visual indicator, the power button also changes color depending on which mode you're currently in. So there's a blue for silent, a light teal for auto, and then red for performance. There's also the option to switch things up in the Legion BIOS and also the option to engage an overclocking profile. But unfortunately, the new 7i doesn't have one loaded. Either way, it's time to load you guys up with results, but I also have to put them in perspective. So the Core i9-10980HK in the system has a base frequency of 2.4 gigahertz and a maximum frequency of 5.3 gigahertz. That 5.3 gigahertz can only be hit if Intel's thermal velocity boost algorithm detects that if the CPU is operating at 65C or lower. If it's operating between 65 to 85, the maximum boost would be 5.1 gigahertz. Starting off with temperatures in Autodesk Maya, and in every mode, the CPU initially hits above 90 degrees Celsius, but then the behaviors are really different. High performance mode sticks to 94C for a good 30 seconds before settling down to about 82, while balanced keeps that higher temperature for 15 seconds and then barely hits an average of 77. In silent mode, you get about 15 seconds of slightly increased heat, and then, like the others, it falls, but in this case, to just 56 degrees Celsius. Honestly, that's the idle temperature of some recent notebooks we've come across. But what does that mean for clock speeds? Well, those short bursts of heat at the very beginning directly align with higher frequencies. 
They boost for a short period of time and then level out. This is pretty normal for Intel CPUs, but it also tends to inflate results, especially in benchmark programs that have short run times. So here, the i9-10980HK ends up at a constant 3.7 GHz and 3.3 GHz for performance and auto modes. Silent mode, on the other hand, well, it just doesn't even allow the CPU to hit its base frequency. Okay, so before switching over to power consumption, I do need to give you a little bit more context. You see, the Core i9-10980HK has a nominal TDP of 45 watts, but notebook manufacturers can configure it up to a TDP of 65 watts. So for all intent and purposes, the TDP in this case is basically the package power of the CPU. But there's more to that. You see, within those TDP specs are some power limits or PL subcategories that you'll need to know about. I'll try to explain it in easier terms. So after a period of idle, we load the CPU and power level two gets implemented. PL2 is power that can be sustained only for a short period of time. In the i9-10980HK's case, that's up to a huge 135 watts, but it can only be configured down to 107 watts by a notebook manufacturer. Meanwhile, the TAU is the maximum length of the time PL2 can be sustained for, and in this CPU's case, it's 52 seconds. Finally, there's PL1, which is the long-term sustained power consumption, and that brings us back to the 45 watt to 65 watt TDP spec Intel gives us in their official documents. All right, so let's check out how the Legion's handling this. Initially, both performance and balance modes allow for the i9 CPU to consume over 100 watts for a short burst in the PL2 power state. The amount of time spent here directly aligns with the higher frequencies we saw in the last charts. Balanced then gradually makes its way down to a constant 60 watts, but in performance mode, it looks like Legion might be implementing a higher than spec TDP since their cooling system can handle the increased heat. And in silent mode, yeah, this looks like the 7i can actually undervolt its CPU, so even when it's under constant all-core load, it only consumes 25 watts. That's a huge deal, guys, if you're on battery, but you still need to get some intensive work done. Now, one of the real benefits of these modes is how they affect noise levels. Silent mode is literally whisper quiet, while performance mode spins the fence at almost maximum speed, so those higher frequencies can be maintained. Meanwhile, balance mode is a nice happy medium between the two, and believe it or not, in that setting, the 7i is actually one of the quietest notebooks that we've come across. But does that mean you sacrifice a ton of performance? Well, between balance and performance, the numbers are really, really close. So much so that unless you really need that extra speed, I'd actually recommend you keep this notebook in balanced mode. Now, if you decide to run it in quiet mode, it completely handicaps performance in most cases. But then, check this out, in Premiere Pro, there's literally no difference between the three. While all of the other tests load the CPU at maximum, Premiere actually balances loads between the CPU, the integrated graphics, and the discrete graphics card. So none of them are working at full capacity or even close to their power limits. So even quiet mode can maximize performance here. That's actually pretty cool. Now, what really shocked me was how little of an impact the modes had on battery life when browsing the web or doing simple tasks like spreadsheets or word processing. That's because every one of them allowed the i9 CPU to enter its lowest near idle power state. But once you start loading up that CPU with more intensive tasks, well, there is an epic difference with the silent operation getting nearly four times the battery life as high performance. The only limitation with it is processing intensive tasks will take much longer to finish. And now on to gaming. And if you thought the last results were interesting, hold on to your hats because this one is pretty wild. You see, when we analyze CPU frequencies over time, for auto and quiet modes, they're pretty close to one another. But check out where high performance is. While the other two dips after a few seconds, this thing just keeps going on and on at 4.4 gigahertz. Now, analyzing CPU temperatures over time, here we're seeing a lot higher temperatures since there's some additional heat being built up by the GPU that gets transferred onto the 10980HK. After testing a ton of notebooks, we've come to expect this kind of behavior when gaming. Now, since gaming doesn't require 100% load across the CPU cores, all the performance modes are able to operate at much lower TDP levels than in our Maya test. But what I really want to point out here is the law of diminishing returns when it comes to CPU speeds versus power. Look, silent and auto modes only need between 25 to 30 watts to hit about 3.5 gigahertz. Meanwhile, high performance requires double the power for about 25% higher frequencies. Moving on to the GPU, and this one had me scratching my head for a little bit. 
Even though performance mode allows the CPU to move on at really high clock speeds and its initial GPU speeds are better here, auto mode actually allows for slightly higher average frequencies as time goes on. But the difference between all three modes is only about 60 megahertz, so even though the charge scale might make the gap look quite big, it actually isn't. Another thing to note here is that Nvidia rates the RTX 2080 Super Max Q at between 1080 and 1560 megahertz. So these are all at the higher end of that spectrum. The odd thing here is that auto pushes the RTX 2080 Super to reach temperature levels that are a good five degrees Celsius hotter than the other two modes. Based on all the other tests, I would have expected high performance mode to take the crown here, but that wasn't the case. The plot thickens when you start taking a look at power consumption. You see, after a few minutes, the auto mode is really allowing the GPU to stretch its legs a bit more at 95 watts of constant power consumption. High performance isn't too far behind at 90 watts, while silent mode hits Nvidia's 80 watt spec. What's probably going on here is lower fan speeds are driving up temperatures and the increased heat also leads to more power being used. We were all wondering why high performance didn't get higher GPU clocks, but I think I know what's going on here. In that mode, the Legion 7i still puts emphasis on the CPU's performance rather than giving more thermal and power budget to the GPU. Now, looking at the actual gaming results, there really isn't that much difference between high performance and balanced modes on average. But, and this is a big but, the increased CPU frequencies seems to really improve the 1% lows and overall smoothness of gameplay. As for the quiet setting, well, that still delivers really respectable frame rates, but the combination of lower speeds for both the processor and graphics cards combined to lower performance by a noticeable amount. The acoustic levels when gaming is basically in line with what we expected. So basically a bit higher than when the 7i is being hit with an all core CPU load. So there you have it guys. And honestly, I think that these tests really opened our eyes in a few ways. It's really interesting to see how companies like Legion are taking their gaming notebooks and packing them with different performance modes that actually make a difference. Simply flipping over a switch can turn a noisy, hot, high performance gaming notebook into one that's silent and offers longer battery life when you need it. Now, do I think that the extra noise and heat level of performance mode is worth over auto? Not necessarily, because it feels like a diminishing rate of return, but it's really nice to have that extra shot of adrenaline when you absolutely need it. But most importantly, all this testing also shows that we might need to add a bit of testing to future notebook reviews in order to show a realistic view of performance in more situations. And yes, that's more work for us. But while testing at the highest performance mode shows the best possible case, it might not be the right setting for everyone. What performance mode do you guys run your gaming laptops when they're plugged in? Is it the highest performance setting or do you choose balanced or do you switch between the two depending on your use case scenario? I'm curious to know, I'll be hanging out in the comments Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.